Good morning, everybody. A great day to begin with and a great event we are trying to commemorate. It's a countdown to the Indian Navy Day. We talk of operations. We talk of, uh, you know, manufacturing. We talk of everything in the Navy when we come to the month of November till the month of December. And this time, you know, we thought that the most important thing we wanted to talk about was a trailblazing story Indian Navy began with its Make in India drive. And, you know, it was not just the Indian Navy. It could have begun but not been successful hadn't we had this real wholesome ecosystem of shipyards and ship manufacturers, which are, uh, to begin with, were public sectors. And in this journey tracing, we have today we have with us Commodore Hemant Khatri, who's retired from the Indian Navy and is currently the CMD of Hindustan Shipyards Limited. Good morning, sir, and welcome to ADU's chat room. Good morning, Sangitaji. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and a chance to interact and talk on a subject that we all love so much. Absolutely, sir. And it is such a wonderful day today. Hindustan Shipyards Limited started with the beautiful story of Valchand Hirachand. And today, uh, I believe, is his anniversary, which is a wonderful feeling, you know, because when you talk to somebody who heads the organization and its pioneers started it on the day we are talking, it's a lovely feeling, sir. It's been 81 years since the company started so sir uh, what is what is the journey and how have you how do you trace it sir uh very interesting point actually today happens to be 140th birth anniversary of uh, the founder of our company uh, state walchand hirachand doshi and uh, he was born in 1882 uh, today we celebrated uh, and paid tributes to him with all my officers we recounted uh, the achievements and what all he did basically to inspire the team of today. Uh, it was an amazing feat that he did if you look at his journey uh, from railway contractors to the sugar mills and then, um, you know, president of merchant chambers of three of them, Bombay as well as uh, sugar factory and many other things, having a sugar factory to his account and then moving beyond Maharashtra to set up uh, HAL in uh, 1940 and uh, Sindhya shipyard in 1941. Hindustan shipyard was then called as Sindhya shipyard and then premier uh, automobile factory, the road transport. And prior to that in 1919, Balchand uh, Industries in Pune, uh, you know, I think uh, which will make machinery for all. Uh, that was a tremendous journey. I mean, no doubt uh, that he is uh, truly revered and regarded as the father of Indian transportation system. And uh, in 1919, on 5th April, the first ship of uh, uh, called SS Loyalty, uh, Steamship Loyalty, was the first ship which sailed from India, from Indian shores uh, under Indian flag to foreign waters. And that is the reason that 5th April is uh, celebrated as National Maritime Day. And that ship sailed under the flag of uh, Sindhya Shipyard, which today is uh, uh, Hindustan Shipyard. I mean, Sindhya Navigation Company. He started off with Sindhya Navigation Company. His dream was that the ships of Indian uh, flag made in India should sail all across the seven seas. He did that with the first ship. He did that with many more. And, uh, and uh, when you look at this, he was really, uh, 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 he was the one who started Make in India. Truly, Atmanirbhar program was started by him. Uh, and the first ship, made in an Indian shipyard which was launched was also from Hindustan shipyard. It was in 1948 after our independence called Jalusha. Uh, and uh, that time uh, there was technology was, you know, in, uh, was very different in India. The communication system, the ship designing, ship construction, everything was very different. But uh, uh, he did all that. And from there on, the journey has been going uh, good. Uh, India got independence and as you rightly said, we are in the week of celebrating uh, Navy week and Navy has been the pioneer. They took the pattern and indigenization in right earnest started from Indian Navy with the Leander class of ships, which were built in Bombay, six of them. And the story goes on. <laughs> No, it's really wonderful. And sir, uh, you know, when 81 years since it began and 61 years, if I'm not wrong, since it became, became an Indian uh, government's enterprise. So it became a PSU. 
And uh, since it became a PSU, so what was the journey like? You know, because it was, it was it Indian Navy and Indian Coast Guard. Uh, what was the journey of Hindustan Shipyards Limited that time? Uh, yes, uh, journey has been a, I would say, a roller coaster ride. To be very frank, uh, achievements have been that we have this year when we are celebrating Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. We have uh, uh, achieved a target of building and delivering 200 ships to our customers. And our customers span from uh, uh, Shipping Corporation of India, ONGC, Dredging Corporation of India, Indian Navy, Coast Guard, and many more. Uh, in addition, in these uh, years, we have uh, repaired 2,000 vessels. So this has been a uh, journey mostly on the civil side because till 2011, we were under Ministry of uh, Shipping and we were primarily focused on uh, uh, commercial vessels and defense orders in that era, which used to be given on nomination, uh, never actually came our way. So that's the reason that though we were a very modern shipyard, but defense orders were very few coming our way because they had Mezagon Dock in Mumbai, GRSE in Calcutta and Goa, which were under DPSU since beginning and that's how they got the orders. Uh, out of 200 that we have built, only 40 are the naval ships, out of which warships are very limited, just five of them to talk of. But uh, yes, we have learned a lot from Navy and now we are working with Navy. My today's current projects are all naval projects. Right, sir. Uh, you know, that's, it's wonderful to see a growth which is step by step. Normally what happens, you know, something which is very well begun becomes half done you know so i think it's a very nice thing to see that you know it's a step-by-step -step journey which actually gets you to the pinnacle after a certain stage but one thing which everyone knows is your major love affair with submarines sir. i've heard that it's a <laughs> beautiful, you know refitting of submarine we know right since the beginning since we started journalism we know that uh, the Sun Shipyards had a real good contract for refits and reels. So, sir, what was it like? How did you get chosen? And uh, the, the Indian Navy, of course, put its real faith. And uh, I'm sure it it's a journey you really would, uh, you know, look back at pride with and look forward to it always. Uh, very right. I think uh, you have touched the right point in the sense that we have three strategic business units. Uh, shipbuilding is one that we have talked of and we have built 200 ships. Another being ship repairs, which I briefly mentioned that we have repaired 2,000 ships since inception. And third is submarine business unit. Uh, very few people know that uh, in 1972, Hindustan Shipyard repaired two Egyptian submarines. And that was with the help of naval people. And that time, the naval dockyard had not even come up. So it was a base repair uh, depot, uh, base repair organization in Vizag. And Sarkas was there, headquarters had set up, but the Egyptian submarine repair required docking and repairs, so we were the one who did it. Uh, but after that, there was a gap because uh, all naval submarines were being looked after by the naval dockyards, uh, both Bombay and Vizag, and their crew had gone to Russia and to the OEM premises and learned. So there was never a need. But the visionaries and leaders in naval realized, and they are they look at 10, 15 years ahead, and they realized that there will be a need. Uh, when our shipyards, our naval dockyards will get loaded and they will require a PSU or a shipyards. That time there were no private yards. So Hindustan shipyard being in the ecosystem next to naval dockyard was the rightly place. And we were picked up. Uh, we were given the first submarine called uh, INS Bagli in uh, 1999 uh, for a medium refit or a major refit. It is like midlife upgrade. And... Uh, it was with the help of Russians, Russian who came here, we did work with them and we delivered that submarine after six years. Uh, these are the major refits and life upgrade which definitely take anything from uh, five to uh, six years, seven years. If there is a total change of equipment, sometimes it takes more than that in the first of its class. Russians being the OEMs in first time, they have taken about five years and now they are taking three and a half years is what it's worth. Then came another submarine called INS Sindhu Kirti. It is the first submarine which underwent a midlife upgrade, means change of weapon systems altogether, entire control system and weapon system by uh, any shipyard or a naval dockyard in the country. Rest of them have all been done in Russia. So we were the first one to do that. Of course, we took quite some time. Uh, but when we completed it, I think the performance of the submarine has its own story to talk about with no defects 
first sailing uh, successful uh, diving depth achieved and so on and so forth and then the journey con continued we had the uh, sindhu veer in 2017 which we delivered on time in 2023 years and luckily now we are getting the next one which should be coming to us immediately after the navy day so i think the navy day has a very special uh, uh, you know uh, hsl has a very special emotions and gratitude for navy day especially this one when we are getting a summary for the refit very nice sir. that's wonderful actually it's a lovely story because you know when we uh, talk uh, recently we had a good uh, you know discussion in delhi at one of the conferences on maintenance repair and overhaul and uh, we realize that uh, 90% in the other forces is going away abroad so in india uh, you know it's it's a very nice feeling that the navy at least has put its faith totally on the indian shipyards which is wonderful and suppose they have to go to the oem again and then you know then this the point of having such state of the art shipyards doesn't make sense at the end of the day so i think it's a lovely uh, march ahead you know absolutely and uh, sir when we talk of this march ahead so what is the backlog like uh, for uh, the number of ships in the backlog and also if there is a uh, you would like to talk about a financial backlog uh yes uh, there is nothing it and we are in public domain and in any case we are a public uh, sector undertaking uh, we had legacy liabilities and uh, uh, financial backlog for a long time uh important to understand the reason that we were not into the defense ship building we never got an order as i said earlier uh commercial ship building has always been an expensive proposition because by the time we were building the koreans the japanese had taken more than 70% of the market even today indian ship building commercial ship building our uh, stake is below 1% uh with the china taking over you know 25 years ago have as the largest market share so in 1947 48 and up to 55 was the era when patriotism and nationalist feeling was very strong and the ships were made in companies like sindhya shipyard but thereafter the commercial interest naturally overweight and which whosoever supplied at a lesser competitive cost the companies went to them that's how the uh, you know the orders came down the technology upgrade since there was no orders there was no technological upgrade since there were no orders the manpower the human capital never felt the urge to upgrade themselves and get into competition mode uh, added to that a feeling that we are a you know public sector and uh, you know socialist model with which our uh, nation building started that also acted ki okay now our jobs are secured and you know there is nothing to worry about so all these factors as you know took psus to a uh, in, in a state that inefficiencies actually uh, uh increase particularly in the phase of 70s 80s 90s and so on thanks to globalization privatization and uh, you know li liberalization that happened in 92 and particularly after 2014 when government decided that it's time that uh, we shut off weight and we become efficient and we become competitive doors are open to the private companies psus are getting listed onto the stock exchange the entire management and corporate philosophy is changing my own ministry today ministry of defense and defense production do not call me as a dpsu they call me as a business entity and they want us to work uh, uh, just like with corporate ethos and corporate principles though uh, you know covered and wrapped within between the government guidelines etc so a uh, primary issue was your question regarding so legacy liability are of the commercial era which continued and uh, 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 you know because of lack of business so as on date we have about uh, negative net worth of uh, 532 crores which for last 5 uh, years we have been reducing uh, company had been in the red for uh, last couple of decades uh, but first time we made uh, came into green was in 2016 and uh, thereafter we have sustained to make profit year on year except one year of covid this year we clocked the highest uh, turnover uh, in the tune of 755 crores we made highest profit uh, which is 7% of our turnover and i am hopeful that in future it will be only increase uh, to top it up we have the best news has been that we have got one order which is a high value order the first in the entire 81 years life history or life journey of hindustan shipyard limited and this order is going to be of 18000 crores we have really never looked at such uh, figures 
Uh, we have barely touched four figures in terms of order book. So it's a big uh, change. We are all gearing up for it. A lot of preparation is already there. And uh, this is going to see a new HSL. So HSL is truly emerging in a new avatar. HSL is uh, adopting all the principles uh, of the government of India on which they are driving. You talk of Make in India, we are talking of Make in HSL, you know, Digital India, Digital HSL, Skill India, we talk of Skill HSL. You name a thing, I think whatever policy government issues to make a new India, in our humble way, we are trying to make it in HSL, to make it a new HSL and which moves and walks and fulfills the ambition of our Honorable Prime Minister and my Ministry, uh, Defence Production. Well, that is a sir, absolute wonderful news. And uh, I think, you know, uh, what you're saying is very correct. Because when we talk about this, we, when, uh, you know, you stopped at a note, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, go uh, uh, digital in HSL, manufacturer in HSL, and also skill. Now, tell me one thing, sir, does that mean that, uh, you know, every, every manufacturing OEM, every OEM has, uh, has its uh, supply chain. So uh, does that mean that you have created a huge ecosystem with your own supply chain, uh, which is readily available to you? And, uh, you know, when these big orders come, do you have the, you know, infrastructure required for it? Or does it mean development of infrastructure for you? So uh, what will it what will be like, you know, having an ecosystem updated to your present need? Uh, ecosystem is the basis and very essential for any industry to develop. To give you an example, we were tying up with Korean company about uh, three years back and we told them we want a ship, we want to tie up with them. Their first requirement was that entire machinery and yard material will be bought from our ancillary industries. We said, no, then what happens to Indian uh, industry and our MSMEs? They said, no, this is our precondition because they are for us and uh, we have nurtured them. So this is how big industries have to take care of the ancillary industries. Uh, we are happy that the government has given a push to MSME and uh, MSMEs are there all over. We are seeing their success stories. We are glad that uh, something that we never even dreamt of three years ago, like Vikram as a private company launching a satellite, was not in our dream just about three years ago. But it is a reality today. When we first heard of drones, we thought it's a highly sophisticated thing. But today there are uh, startups and Indian companies making 100 uh, types of drones. I mean, the scale at which the nation is moving, the startups, the unicorn, the companies, the private companies, I think that push to innovation, to push to get IPR, get registered and do on your own is really catapulting and giving a jose to the new generation and they are taking the lead. Uh, as far as uh, ecosystem is concerned, apart from these startups, you know, you need big industries and you need OEMs to supply. Uh, these OEMs require economy of scale. So when it comes to major machinery, like uh, shaft, propeller, main engine, etc., there are few suppliers in the world. So we, yeah, we are taking a very balanced approach for the items which have got demand, continuous demand. It is best to do in India, and that is the direction in which uh, our ministry is moving. Uh, something which does not make business sense to actually make in India unless we have achieved certain standard and become a global player in supply is something which is still being imported. Absolutely, sir. And, you know, I think that is actually very nice to step forward. And, uh, sir, there are there is one query which comes to my mind always when I speak of Indian Navy. We cannot forget their sister in arm, Indian Coast Guard. And Coast Guard is also into a very major procurement drive. So, uh, do you have a relationship with Coast Guard for manufacturing their ships and for refits? Uh Certainly a very, very strong and good relationship because we uh, exist for them. We exist for Indian Navy. We exist uh, uh, for Coast Guard because they are, again, doing a very, very nationalistic role. Uh, and they are an arm of the government like we are. Uh, together, we serve the national objective, national maritime objective. And we are also for, uh, um, you know, other agencies, like I said, Shipping Corporation of India, Dredging Corporation, ONGC, because they are all playing a nationalist role. So we have a very good relationship with Coast Guard. We have built uh, uh, IPVs for them, five of them. The last one was delivered in 2018. Uh, as on date, I have uh, we have RFP of three uh, requests for proposal, uh, three orders. One is for 112 boats 
uh, another is of uh, 32 boats to be converted into remote control. So these RFPs are out to all shipyards and uh, uh, it's an open tender and we all are responding. So it's a, it's a competition, but certainly we are working with them. In addition, we are also undertaking repair and refits of their ships. Uh, we have recently repaired, uh, uh, you know, one of their ships, which was ahead of schedule. And we have bid for two of their OPVs, which are coming for refit. So we have a very good, very positive relationship. Uh, but these businesses are going on tendering basis so that there is a competition and there is a cost advantage to the owner. And in this case, the Navy or the Coast Guard. Yes, absolutely, sir. And sir, uh, one thing which, uh, you know, is not very much in public domain, but people because uh, probably somewhere uh, there was a little lack in the publicity, which HSL did when it, when it was a part of the major Indian project, the nuclear submarine, sir. But uh, so, uh, you know, we really knew uh, as journalists, we knew that HSL had a very major role to play in it. So, sir, uh, now that you know that that is done, uh, would you be able to talk about what you did for the nuclear submarine and uh, for Arihan? And uh, in uh, succession to that, I also would like to know that for the second submarine, uh, which is already on the way, are you a part of it, sir, the Arihat, sir? Uh, Sangatiji, actually, it is a very, very classified uh, subject and difficult to speak on the public domain, except that I will mention that... Uh, uh, the reason of taking over HSL into Ministry of Defense uh, uh, and shifting it from Ministry of Shipping against the wishes of Ministry of Shipping was the topic which you have said. This was the need and this is how the in 2007, Ministry of Defense on the request of Navy moved a proposal to Ministry of Shipping and to Group of Minister of Transfer and that is how we were transferred to Ministry of Defense in 2011 leaving only CSL under Ministry of Shipping. Otherwise, both of us were under Ministry of Shipping. Uh, that, that's, that's all I can say. But rest is, I think, uh, best left to the experts and those who are dealing with classified subjects. Right. Absolutely, sir. I agree with you. Absolutely. And, uh, sir, as and when we move towards the end, every, uh, you know, more so in today's world and today's India, uh, the Prime Minister wants you to make in India and also make for the world. So, you know, he wants us to go, go global. And uh, I think that is a very major factor. And we see shipyards, you know, in uh, most of the shows abroad, their naval shows, you'll see them, their yeah. defense shows, you'll see them. So I wanted to understand from you, sir, that uh, what is HSL's export policies? Uh, okay. Uh this is, this is a focus area of our ministry. This is a focus area of Prime Minister. And therefore, we are having regular uh, uh, meetings, conferences, and feedback which goes to our ministry on export. Uh, all our shipyards are trying. And as you see, we are making our presence uh, seen globally and in global exhibitions. But uh, honestly speaking, this is a long journey. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, those who are established players to supply to the world uh, to uproot them or to find a place for ourselves. I'm sorry, uproot may be a wrong word. To find an area or a market for us, we got to have an edge over them in terms of either speed of delivery or in terms of quality and contents of our product. Unless our product is niche, uh, the global player will not be able to buy. And for it to be niche, uh, it has to have two factors. Uh, either the cost has to be low or uh, it has to have some USPs. USPs require a uh, lot of research and development, uh, a lot of money to go into it. Uh, this is an area where we are still working on, and it requires probably a consolidation. Uh, second, as far as cost trading is concerned, uh, uh, PSUs have their own overheads. You see, uh, we are governed and guided by uh, tens and tens of government policies, be in terms of... Uh, you know, uh, recruitment policies or so procurement, uh, import duties, taxes, you name a thing. I think there is a, a lot of thing under which we come. Rightly so. I mean, we have a socialist role too. So these are the factors. Now, if there is an industry making a particular item, it's maybe easy to export if it is lesser in cost. But for ships to be exported, you have to produce the best. A product which has not been supplied by anybody else. So I feel this is one area which we have made a very humble beginning. As of now, our shipyards have exported to uh, uh, you know Bangladesh and uh, Mauritius and Maldives and certain Southeast Asian countries. 
these are smaller crafts but the warships etc we are yet to find a place and my view is that uh, uh, we will require the defense psus will require a consolidation to be able to be a global player no global player is looking at uh, uh, seven or eight shipyards in india to compete for it it doesn't work like this you look at england uh, you look at uh, you know italy italy had uh, eight shipyards they all consolidated into one called finkenteri shipyard which became a global entity with 71% market share similarly um, uh, korea has uh, hhi and the other industry dsme they have all joined china as you all know has only one shipping industry across such a massive country they divided into two they have again come back to one so to fight a bigger game to play in a bigger game you got to be that much bigger you got to consolidate your resources your expertise your r and d uh, to come out with such a product so uh, there is a long way to go a uh, beginning has been made and uh, let's see where we reach as far as hsl is concerned uh, because of negative net worth we are not eligible to bid for any global uh, tender in fact some of the domestic tenders also from ongc uh, and other companies they indicate uh, and even naval tenders uh, and coast guard tenders which come they indicate that uh, you have to have a positive net worth you have to have so much of uh, uh, rating you have to have so much of working capital to bid for this project in all these cases hsl being a 100% government owned company being taken over by md for a cause we are left out we are not able to bid for these but in our humble way we have started export in the sense that we are, i have started doing uh, repairs of foreign ships so this year we repaired two foreign ships uh, and earned about 5 crores of uh, revenue in for uh, thing and now there are two foreign companies which want to tie up with us one dubai based and one singapore we are going to tie up with them so i will take the journey forward towards the repair of foreign ships because there they don't wait for positive or negative net worth when they have a defect they want it right off who can repair us fastest so i think i can play a role uh, over there and uh, towards the export business i think uh, hsl has uh, a uh, some ground to travel because in the last 81 years we hardly made any warship uh so to export a warship first my own indian navy has to be convinced to give hsl a warship to be made which they can use then only others will look at us and uh, we made commercial vessels but as i said commercial is highly competitive the finance cost in our country overall goes to 11 to 12% i believe in this budget uh, custom duty will again be imposed on to the goods that we import for uh, ship building whereas finance cost in uh, korea in china in uh, japan uh, you know and other countries in turkey is in the range between 3 to 5% with current inflation and ukraine war it has gone to let's say 6 6.5% but even then it is much lower and the uh, other support ancillary industries and support which is provided to them is far and wide so uh, that's where i would say there are a uh, few major steps to be taken and challenges before we become truly global in exporting warships to foreign uh, countries i think it's been so wonderful discussing this with you and i really uh, feel you know as the leader of the company and uh, you uh, what i'm sure you know at the end i would really i want to ask you three things how do you plan for hsl a short term goal and a long term goal uh well uh, every uh, ceo uh, has his vision and that's the primary job of a ceo to be a visionary for the company to lay the road map and to prepare leaders for tomorrow i think these are the fundamental and the basic uh, roles of a ceo the rest of it you know ship building uh, and msme and other things are secondary uh, for the long term sustenance and we do have a uh, vision and we have a plan we are working on a five year plan our aim is to take our uh, uh, increase our turnover by not less than 30% every year uh i have already taken a 50% jump with respect to last year uh, we are at 755 we are going to cross 1000 this year and so on and so forth in next 3 years i am looking at a turnover of more than 2000 crores that's number one number two is that the profit we were a loss making company as i told you for 3 to 4 decades and we turned around in 2016 onwards with a modest profit of 7 to 8 crores and then 13 crores etc we are at 50 crores 
I am hoping to cross 100 crores in this year and so much more than that as we grow up. Uh, uh, then we are looking at changing our organization culture where a lot of work has been done by me and my predecessor. It's a long journey uh, from, uh, you know, at a level when uh, there are no hopes and you are sunk into debt and you are... Uh, 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 you don't see business coming your way and you don't find a customer faith in you from there to rise and compete in an era where uh, private shipyards are saying that we want level playing field and uh, there is nobody to hold your hand. I think it's a challenging task and uh, we are traveling, we are traversing that journey and our mantra is uh, uh, reform with intent, perform with uh, integrity and transform with intensity. Uh, that's the aim. We are hoping to become a mini Ratna uh, in next about five to seven years. And we have a roadmap chalked out for it. Thank you very much, sir. I think it was such a lovely conversation. And, uh, you know, we always have been wanting to know. It's always, you know, uh, we have so much. It's, an, it's a reputation India currently has in the naval manufacturing field, which is really strong. And uh, I'm really grateful, sir, that you gave us this time from your very heavy schedule, I know which is. And uh, it's a lovely story to trace Indian Navy's journey with the support it has got from the manufacturing front. Thank you very much, sir, for being on ADU's chat room. Sir. Thank you so much, Sangeet. It's an honor and privilege. I hope I could do justice. But India is strong and India is on the track. Something that we never dreamt of. Uh, I'm happy that in age of, you know, in late 50s, we are seeing a changing area, uh, changing India. And it fills up with a lot of hope, a lot of dreams and a lot of uh, happiness that finally the Indian tiger is rising, is charging and is thrusting ahead. And uh, with 138 uh, crore people, I think uh, present government uh, or the present dispensation has really ignited us. And uh, India is truly on the move, as our visionaries saw, as Swami Vivekanand said, arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is achieved. Thank you so much, Senator. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Jain, sir. Jain. Okay.